We were not scheduled to talk Lakers today, but they make it so hard. Run It Back starts now. Run it up, the run it back. Yeah. Run it up, the run it back. Run it back. Run it up, run it back. Yeah. Run it up. Good yeah, Tuesday yeah. morning, everybody. This is Run It Back. My name is Michelle Beadle, joined as always by Stadium Insider Sham Sharania, Chandler Parsons with the serious face this morning, and Eddie G. Eddie Gonzalez chilling. Um, guys, guess what we get to start the show with? <gasps> Lakers. Okay. But it's good news because they blew a 17 point lead. And I think that's actually a fun thing to start talking about. They lost to the Pacers on a buzzer beater by the rookie. 17 point lead going into the fourth. Um, the reactions to this game for you guys are what? Eddie? Um, Lakers are still bad. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! They're still bad. Everybody's back. They're still bad. The 17 point lead, it's a little misleading. That was 17 points, I think 937 left in the game. But yeah, Ouch. you can't lose this game. You can't lose this game. They, they look terrible down the stretch. And then you give up this three. Uh, it's it's rough. I believe AD didn't attempt a shot in the final six minutes of the game. Uh, I saw Laker fans saying Russ should have been benched. I saw Laker fans saying if Russ uh, would have played more minutes, they would have won. It's just it's just a mess over there. We 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 tried to give them props yesterday, and they put us right back to where we were. It's the Laker way, I guess. Yeah, this this is a very, very bad, embarrassing loss. Um, and it's not getting easier for them. But, I mean, the yeah, AD not touching the ball the last four to six minutes, not taking a field goal. What happened to that guy that was just so aggressive and dominating? Uh, at the end of the game, was just so sloppy for them. They got Russ and LeBron just going ISO. Uh, and that last play is just, first of all, they give up a wide-open look to Miles for the three. And then they don't get an offensive rebound. It's just... I got to be honest with you, I, Haley, I started doing the Christmas tree when they were up at the end of the fourth <laughs> quarter because I thought this thing was over. And these are the games that the Lakers just can't lose. The team at home, they should beat um, up 17 in the fourth quarter and you blow a lead to this team. It's just these are the ones you look back and, and say, damn, this we missed the play in because of, of this type of loss. And looking at their schedule ahead look at it's their schedule is insane they're 7 and 12 and and their schedule coming up is it's about to get really really ugly for them unless they figure something out quick about to get real shams all right well how, how <laughs> did they lose how did they lose this game why well, I, I, I was on the show yesterday talking about how the Lakers were taking care of business and winning the games that they weren't winning last year against teams like the Spurs. And then what happens is they blow a 17-point lead. And I think a lot of it, when you look, they just didn't keep their poise fully, right? You see a lot of celebrating in that fourth quarter. And I, I don't ever blame that on, like, that's not the reason that they lost, right? Executing uh, down the stretch is a reason. Not getting a defensive rebound, not getting Anthony Davis the ball enough. I think only two shots in the fourth quarter, uh, but you need to keep your poise down the stretch of games. And so for Indiana, they are a hard playing team and they execute well. Rick Carlisle has those guys playing at a high level. So you, you can never discount a team like that, especially when you take your foot off the gas pedal. And so for Indy, I think this just continues to show why th there's a very real chance that this team could keep riding this out and seeing how competitive this team gets because at the end of the day, in that market, for that ownership group, being competitive and making the playoffs is, is a very big deal. And so this is another really gutty win for the Pacers. Yeah, and, and I got to be honest, I, I don't think LeBron at this point should be taking more shots than Anthony Davis. I just feel like this is this is his team. He's the future. He's he, He's got to be that guy. Last week, that was dominating games. He even had a different feel, a different look to him just watching the game. He felt everything was with purpose. Everything was more aggressive and you just, you can't do that in the fourth quarter at home against this team. And yeah, the Pacers, are, the Pacers were solid. Look, Tyrese Halliburton has been playing so solid. I think he's got 40 assists and zero turnovers or something the last three games. Like they play hard. They're young. Uh, Carlisle's a great coach. Um, but this is a situation where AD, they got to call a timeout and AD's got to, you know, demand the ball. He's got to demand touches. They can't just, he can't just sit there and watch LeBron and Russ do what they did in the fourth quarter because it's going to result in, in bad, bad losses like this to not very good teams. You know what's crazy is that last week we, we kept thinking, like, what's going to happen to AD when LeBron returns? And part of me was like, oh, nothing. They're professionals. They should continue to dominate. But 
surely it can't be that simple that LeBron returns and the math gets off and he, I, it's just weird to watch, but I don't want to take away from what the Pacers did. They were six of 13 from three in the fourth, currently sitting fourth in the East. Eddie, what does it say about them? What are you, what are you reading from this team when you see them play? Well, they're one of the more well-coached teams in the league. You know, Chandler knows about Rick Carlisle. He knows how he gets down and, and he, he, this is a mix of younger guys and, and, and younger vets as well. There's somebody like Miles Turner or Buddy Hill, who's not exactly like a gray beard just yet, but they play really fast. They got Tyrese Halliburton at the head of the snake, kind of orchestrating everything. He's such an efficient player himself. Uh, they're just a well-put-together team. It's, it's kind of funny looking back, thinking that they should have been tanking when – they hit on Benedict Matherin. Everybody pretty much knew he was going to be good coming out the draft, and he was going to be the steal falling out of that, especially falling out of that top three and even falling behind Jaden Ivey. Um, they they run, they shoot a lot of threes and to the point where even if they're not making them all, they make enough, um, and they take care of the ball, as, as evidenced by uh, Halliburton's quirky little stat, Chris Paulish stat right there that, that Chandler mentioned. Um, they're just a smart and well-coached team when, when I watch them, and they have a ton of firepower. And it's it's hard to match that night in and night out. Crazy too, because there's so many rumors floating around. Shams, what is your take on this Pacers squad as constructed right now? Well, I, I think that they're gonna keep like they're gonna keep this team together as long as it remains competitive. And I think executives around the league really believe that uh, uh, this market in Indiana they feel like making the playoffs is a monumental feat. And so if this team they're 12 and eight through their first 20 games, let's see how the next 10 to 15 game goes. Uh, games goes but I think right now the Pacers have a look of a team that can at least compete for a playoff berth and if that's the case that means guys like Miles Turner, Buddy Heald, TJ McConnell, other veteran players on this team would be off the trade market because they looked at a lot of different scenarios for a bunch of their guys right before the start of the season and even still if a, if a deal comes comes together uh, and, and someone gives them a crazy offer like the Lakers giving up two first round picks which I don't foresee um, you know, th they could very well move these guys, but I don't think they're just going to be looking to trade them like they were before the season. As much as they thought this team would just take care of business and, and not be that good, probably, like this team is, is showing that it's competitive right now. How the tables have turned. Look, the Lakers players may have left the uh, crypto.com arena sad, but one dude did not. I love it when just some rando gets to win some cash. Half court uh, shot. Although. <laughs> God. They got to give him a 10-day. <laughs> Might as well, right? Third third best <laughs> shooter on the roster. <laughs> right. I think he's already signed. <laughs> right. <laughs> he has been waiting to celebrate. I mean, he just walks over to AD. <laughs> it's fantastic. 75 grand cool. is no joke, though, by the way. Like, I've seen and, these. And this was these... right before the fourth quarter, right? Like, right. Yeah, that's this... crazy. I'm, I'm watching the Lakers They're celebrating players. celebrating with this yeah. shooter. <laughs> That was beyond half, too. Like, he didn't even right? get all the way. Usually, everybody's toeing the line. He shot put it from, from 50 away. Like, that's, it was that's perfect. insane. If that doesn't right, pop though, up. You're, you're sitting here watching the team up 17 celebrate this dude, having no idea they're about to get just <laughs> a crazy comeback <laughs> on him. That guy's the only no, like, one happy that night. I love to play. it so much. I know you're up double digits, but... To celebrate with this, I mean, literally the entire Lakers <laughs> roster was celebrating with him right before the start of, you know, the quarter that they ended up losing the game in. Like, it's it's actually crazy when you think back at it. Ridiculous. It does make me like the Lakers for a half second, though, because they should celebrate. 75 grand for hitting a shot. I mean, it's better than a lot of arenas. A lot of arenas are like, here's some hamburgers. Like, that's, that's awesome. Uh, not the only <laughs> game, obviously, last night. Timberwolves, all eyes on them, because what is going on? Cat got injured. Um, Porzingis with his career high 41 that was the moment however that we were talking about um update what do we have on that sham so far on cat well when Carl anthony towns look back that is a look of someone that feels like they just got kicked in the achilles but i'm told there was a lot of optimism and, and there was hope post game that this is just a, a bad calf strain he's gonna have full testing later today and there's going to be an update, but there were people around the organization that were, that were hopeful that this will just end up being a calf injury. We'll see after he gets the full extent. But even if it's just a calf strain, 
that's going to sideline him for an extended period of time, most likely. Uh, you know, calves, hamstrings, groins. Like these are these are tough injuries to deal with, and you don't just come back like that. So this is going to be something to monitor for a while, even if it is just a calf. And Carl Anthony Towns avoided uh, the worst in an Achilles tear. Yeah, this non-contact stuff is scary. It reminds me of KD in 2019, where they said you know calf strain, and then it ended up being his Achilles. Uh, th- this is never good. Uh, this this is scary. So I hope he's okay. Um, but yeah, this is obviously a tough blow. He's he's kind of their focal point. Um, you know, they've been struggling. Uh, hopefully now they can. You know, it's it's a classic case of the where the best player goes out, and these other guys are now going to get this opportunity to step up and kind of fill the holes. But yeah, you never want to see this happen uh, to anybody. I mean, that you do have a point there, though. We have seen this this season alone where the best guy goes out and the team rallies and they do okay. Because right now, as they are, they've lost three straight, Eddie. So if Cat is out for an extended period of time, what do you expect from this Timberwolves team? Yeah, yeah I, I, we, 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 we joke about Cat a lot on here and Chandler's MVP pick, but <laughs> they, need that, they need his firepower. They need what he provides in spacing. Um, will they be able to play a more functional and traditional game with Rudy um, and, and spacing him out a little better? Yeah, but they're, they're absolutely going to miss Cat and what he brings. And, uh, you know, it's Anthony Edwards' chance to really step into that role that he clearly wants and and, and show that he should be the guy on this team. Uh, you know, Rudy had a great night last night. He killed my parlay. So, uh, <laughs> you know, maybe they'll be able to tra- tread water for, for a while. The, the West is... You know, it's it's a mess right now. So all, all they got to do is, you know, go on a nice little streak here and you, they'd be fifth seed in no time. Yeah, it's tough because they're not really competing. They're not a contender with Cat. Now you, now you take him out of the lineup. Uh, it's tough. L- like Eddie just said, I think this is hopefully a blessing in disguise and this kind of gives Ant that opportunity to kind of be that number one guy. They go back to a more modern lineup with, with just one big and it gives guys like McDaniels, hopefully when he gets back and Noel, these other guys to get these reps and get these minutes uh, that hopefully they can stay afloat and stay in the playoff picture, you know, while cat is out, but this is a chance for D'Angelo Russell to kind of find it. He's been struggling all year long. So everybody in that locker room kind of has to take ownership. because It's going to be a collective, uh, a collective, uh, you know, approach here with, with, you know, cat missing this, uh, probably an extended amount of time. Uh, on the other side of things, Christoph Porzingis, a career high 41, 29 of those came in the first half. They're above 500 as a team. Um, which means we have to ask the inevitable question. Are these three Porzingis, Beal and Kuzma? Is it enough to do any kind of competition in the East for them? Chandler. Uh, no, I, I still think they're a ways away. And look, it's it's weird that this threesome confuses me because they're they are very good. They're just they don't they're not good together. They're they're playing good. They have good games. This reminds me of a team where like team they should trade one of these guys. A lot of teams want some one of these three players, but together the the East is too good. These guys, I'm still taking teams like Miami over them in a series. I'm you know, obviously Boston, Milwaukee are, are still much better, but. Uh, Przingis, I'm, I'm sure Luca was watching this game last night. Like, damn, where was this guy when he was in <laughs> Dallas? He's, he's doing it all. Kuzma's having big games, and Beal is one of my favorite players. But yeah, I just don't think they have enough. Um, I don't see it. They're going to have ex- explosive nights like this where they're going to get some wins. But the East is too deep. The East is too good, and, and I don't think they have a chance to compete. Yeah, Eddie. competing is tough. Uh, you 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 wonder about how this team can defend. You wonder about how deep this team is as well. Those three, I mean, that's a nice trio. Yeah, I, I think in the perfect world, you'd have a player better than all three of them, uh, on top of all of them, really making the engine go. Maybe like a Luka Doncic, but yeah, they're a solid match. And what I like about them is they're they're also varied in how they score. They can get it in all three levels. It, it Kuzma. KP, I think that's the difference for KP this year as well, is that he's not just standing in the corner or just running pick and pop and throwing up threes. He's getting his post-ups. He's flashing to the rim. He's he's getting it on the roll, and he's gotten to a much better rhythm. I'm happy for him because it's been a wild stretch since that you, that first year in New York with all the you know all the hoopla of being the guy oh, for man. the Knicks. Um, oh, you mean the unicorn? Great. 
Yeah, when you call yeah. a guy a unicorn before he's even done anything, that's, that's a bit of pressure, which is why I freak out for women yama. But Shams, oh, look, we're a couple of weeks away from where I assume trade things will start to happen. But as far as this Wizards team, what do you see? So I I actually think, you know, the question was, uh, can they be, co be competitive in the East uh, in a playoff series? I don't think they can win, uh, you know, a playoff series that, or, you know, against the upper echelon teams. But I, I do think this team can be competitive. I do like Bradby. I do like Porzingis. I do like the way Kuzma's coming on. Kuzma and Porzingis, both, you know, Kuzma's going to be a free agent, most likely with a player option. Kristaps Porzingis has a player option as well. You would figure that both guys enter free agency. So the Wizards have a lot of decisions coming up with their organization. Do they look at potential trade packages? Phoenix has been a team that's reached out to them about Kyle Kuzma, has shown interest in them. A couple other teams have also expressed interest in Kuzma. What do you do with him when you know he's probably going to command 20 plus million dollars on the open market due to his play this year? Porzingis, another guy, the way he's played, he's going to command a lot of money, possibly even close to a max as well. So th there's or organizational decisions that are going to need to be made in Washington. But right now, I do think staying competitive and seeing what this team can build on is, is a, first, a first priority there. I can't wait till things start happening. Oh, it's going to be so good. Uh, guess who's back, guys? Joel Embiid. Got that MVP award in his sights. Led his team to a 104-101 win over Atlanta. Finished with 30 eight and seven you know Chandler we all know that he wants that MVP award and he's going to do everything he can to get it what did you see last night yeah I saw him take over the game you know he scored the last 11 points for the Sixers he absolutely took over and dominated the game he put them on the top super uh, late in the game uh he, he he wants the MVP and he and he's gonna carry the load while James and Tyrese are out but this is huge for the Sixers because I think for them to contend and win a championship, they obviously need Tyrese Maxey. They need James Harden. But this is huge because I feel like when they all were playing together, it was just them three and no one else was doing anything. Now they have guys like Shake Milton, Niang, DeAnthony Melton. They have these guys kind of like we were just talking about with the Minnesota team. These guys are now throwing this opportunity where they have a bigger role and they are taking full advantage of it. And, uh, you know, this is what they need to kind of stay afloat. And they're going to win a lot of games because Joel will dominate. Uh, Tobias Harris has been great for them, uh, being that kind of number one when Joel's out, number two option when he's there, catching off the mid post, scoring in multiple different ways. Uh, they are, they've become now this deep team that can hurt you in so many ways. But, uh, you know, the Hawks really tricked this game off last night. Trey had a bad turnover on the lob. They had the shot clock violation right before that. Um, and they just couldn't stop Joel in, in the game. But this is very, this is very promising for Philly. Obviously they want to do it when everyone's back, but man, having guys, like, I think I saw stat shake Milton's averaging 23 with, with those guys out. Like, he was barely playing earlier in the year, so that, that's huge. Yeah, this is this is the conundrum we spoke about before, where they can play one style of ball. Well, James isn't there, and they have Joel, and they can play another style where they have James there, and they don't have Joel. And it's like, which is the best, and how do they make the how do they make the right mix of the two? Uh, since Joel's come back from his illness, I think eleven games ago, they have the best defense in the league, and then. Not so coincidentally, that coincides with James being out as well. So what happens when James comes back and Tyrese Maxey comes back and your defense is just naturally worse? How do they keep this up? It's it's tough. And it, they've made their decision. They've signed up for this for at least this year and, and, and further along to have this kind of weird amalgam of a team. And the, Doc Rivers is going to have to figure out how to get this defense out of his full team when everybody's back. And I don't think he can with that personnel. That's the problem that they're going to face as they try to compete with the top of the East. But it looks great right now. And Joel's a monster. It's always nice to see him be a monster that we know he can be. But this is also classic Hawks, too. It's like a, I, right when I start thinking they're a contender, they go and lose to the, the Rockets. They lose to the shorthanded Sixers. It's, it's, they have so much talent, and I love their team. But this is the only reason why I can't put Atlanta and the upper echelon team because of – it's little games like this where they just have zero consistency. Uh, it's such what? a weird the team. And, you know, to do all that stuff to the Rockets and then lose that game after you're ta taunting everybody. And then you have young guys saying, yo, those guys are punks, basically. Right. It, it's a weird team out there in Atlanta. And Trey Young shooting worse than he's ever shot in his career. And, and to play that style and then still shoot bad and inefficiently. Well, 
I know the true shooting percentage and all that. If you're shooting all those shots and you're shooting them under 40%, it's tough to play with you. And that's, to me, that's the biggest issue they have, as crazy as it sounds. Is that just a maturity issue on the side of Atlanta? I mean, it, it looks like that on television. Like, oh, they just, they have some talent. It's just the closing out and the maturity. Am I wrong in seeing that? Yeah, I mean, they're super young. I mean, they, they've had guys that have played in big games before, though. But this is, yeah, this is all inexcusable stuff because they have the talent, they have the depth, they have the scoring, they have the potential to be a good defense, too. Um, but, yeah, this is this is why that they're not an elite team yet, and this is why that they're going to continue to lose games like this. You know, talking about when everybody comes back, that is the the million-dollar question for a lot of teams when the big stars go out. Doc, can we play the same when everybody's back? That will be the key for us. That is his quote. You guys have touched on it. If I just landed on the planet and I didn't know anything about basketball and you told me that one way they play with this guy, the other way, you have to be able to figure that out. I mean, is it not as simple as, like, shifts? Like, when James Harden's out there, we do this. When Embiid's out there, we do this. Because it cannot be a problem to have superstars on your team. And it feels like it is at times like this, Eddie. And I, I, I don't know, am I nuts? Like it should, this should be a blessing. Well, that's roster construction, right? That's what your general manager does. You want to find pieces that fit. It's not always as simple as we just get the most talent, the biggest names, the best stats, and we throw them out there. There was an obvious fit issue when they went and got James. The, 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 the good thing for them with, with that trade is they didn't even have Ben Simmons to begin with. So it was an improvement in that aspect. There was always an obvious fit issue. You could see it last year as they were playing. Even when they were playing well, it's a lot of hot potato. Your turn, my turn, your turn, my turn. And there's no rhythm to that on top of the, the style of basketball James plays. And so it's tough. Now, is there a world where, yo, deep in a playoff game, yeah, we, we, we go down to the big fella or we handle what James is doing or, or whatever. But it's a long season. You got to get to that playoff game. You got to get to that final three minutes to make those decisions. And it's, it's just an odd fit. It's, at the end of the day, it's just an odd fit. Um, you know, half that organization wants one guy, half that organization wants another guy, and now they have both and they have to figure that out. And I honestly don't think they can, especially with the teams at the top of the East who can exploit that in the ways that they can. All right, we got to talk to Ramp. We, we waited. We put him off as much as we can. 45 last night, and you were front row literally, Eddie. We would like your full report right now go uh i was watching bowl <laughs> bowl i was more excited about that he was pretty <laughs> amazing to see in person my first time seeing him uh but you know what i told kevin after the game was what made this performance so great is it, 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 he scored in every kind of way i mean we're watching it now he's driving he's hitting pull-ups he's he's hitting it in, in a fast break he's he's getting it off the cross he's getting it off the catch 19 made field goals he only had two free throws last night um he, he shot he shot 80 percent from the field he shot 60 percent from three it it was incredible watching that shooting display he put on uh, uh ben went down early and th they were a little more free-flowing in offense in that sense and yeah he showed paulo who, who looked great as well and showed bull bull who also looked great uh it's 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 a little bit of a difference it's a little bit different <laughs> when you get out there and see the see it up close in person what Kevin told me after the game was he's having a lot of fun and, you know, it doesn't always look like it when he's leading the league in text and he's yelling at his teammates, but he's really having fun out there and feels like it's showing in his performance as well. And I, I agree. It, it was incredible performance last night. Chandler. Very serious. Yeah. Player. Look, I, I don't want to get too excited about the Nets beating the magic, but KD was, he was unbelievable. But again, this team confuses me. They beat up on the Grizzlies with everyone out and they lose to the Sixers with, with everyone out. And now they beat up on a, you know, a pretty bad young magic team. But yeah, I mean, KD was sublime. This is, this is why I don't worry about the Nets too much because they have this dude that can score an array of ways. He can post up, he can shoot over you. He was literally laughing at dude last night. As they as he was trying to guard him, um, I would I, I can't wait to the, I want to see them have a quality win against a good team. I want to see them I want to see them do that. They're they're beating up on the bad teams. They're losing to the bad teams. They're kind of all over the place. But man, when KD plays like this, it's no one in the world can stop that man. Yeah, needing you know forty five to beat those guys. It's, yeah, it's a little like, alarming. Right. It was and they needed it. it was they needed every single one of those to beat a really bad team. So it's a little bit concerning, mm -hmm. but. Man, it's fun to watch. No, no Jalen Suggs, no Cole Anthony, no Mo Bamba. I mean, it wasn't the full Orlando Magic either. So I, I hear you. I definitely hear you. 
Doms, these are some backhanded compliments if I've ever heard them. Uh, at least we're talking <laughs> Nets basketball and not something else, right, Doms? <laughs> yeah, I mean, they, they, they needed Kyrie Irving and Kevin Durant to score six, uh, over 60% of the team's points to beat uh, the Magic. I, I think games like that with the Magic having nine available players, you want your role players, you want the rest of your team. Like, that's a night where... You know, Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving probably score 15, 20 points each and, and the role players step up and help lead you to a win. That's usually what happens with elite teams against, uh, you know, bat, you know t- teams that are clearly on the, on the bottom dwelling side. And, and for the Nets, it's like every game that they play in these situations, those two guys have to be superhuman for them to win these games. I think this is a problem that goes back to even last season. Uh, you know, you know, after they traded James Harden. So I think that's just a, an issue that this team is going to deal with. And we'll see. It's only going to get, you know, uh, remedied if if players start to step up. And we'll see if, if and when that time comes. You saw the video there of him chuckling uh, in the face of defense. Okay, so <laughs> never say that KD is not a student in the game. He's listening. He's watching. He knows all. That Javon Carter sound we played a few weeks ago, well, we remember it. So does KD. When do you know that you're in – the rhythm for a binge like that? Uh, when I wake up. Ah, <laughs> uh, an homage. How good is that? The difference is I believe him. I didn't believe Javon Carter. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> fair. Totally fair. Former Brooklyn Nets great, Javon Carter. Uh, right. Yeah, maybe, maybe there's a little synergy there. But no, nah, I mean, I was over there before we headed out it was it was definitely good spirits i was worried a lot the night before he turned his ankle was making sure he was cool he was joking with me in the morning he's like yo i'm a they're load managing me today i'm not playing i'm like bro don't pl- i'm not driving out there if you're not playing what are you talking about he's like no nah, no nah, i'm good i'm good to go and yeah he's definitely in good spirits and i saw him so i, I believe it yeah, Jersey to Brooklyn, that's a commitment. I'm not going to just do that randomly. Uh, look, the Magic, we don't, they don't, they, they're young. We, we know that, but they've got names that people are interested in, like Bancaro and Bull Bull. They each had 24 points. As far as the future and what they're trying to build there, do we have confidence, Choms, in, in what it is they're doing here? I think they have pieces and, and the development of Bull Bull definitely like he's a guy that dealt with injuries his first couple seasons in Denver. You didn't really know if he'd ever pan out. Would he have to spend time in the G League? Would he have to spend time abroad? But they've really developed him. So kudos to their organization. Paolo Bancaro is a flat out player. We know what he's going to be in the league. I think what this team probably really misses is a guy like Markel Fultz. They need a lead guard. So I don't know where that comes from. Is that Scoot Henderson in the draft? Is that someone else? But they need a guy who can really become that lead point guard and, and game management, be dynamic. Maybe that guy is Scoot Henderson if they get back up in the lottery. Yeah, I think they're on the right path. Look, they're still ways away, but they have something with Paolo. They have something with Bull Bull. Watching Bull Bull play, is, he's got a lot of victor in him where he shouldn't be able to do the things he does at his size. And I love to see him flourish. Look, the magic of my team, they've been my favorite team since I was a kid. They have no guards. Jalen Suggs has not been very good. Cole Anthony's been out. Their two highest paid players, Fultz and Isaac, have, haven't played. Um, so I think they're doing all they can do. Um, but they, they need, they need players. They need more talent. Uh, Jamal Mosley, he's the man he he's doing everything that he can do. Um, but they, they need to add a guard. They need, they need to, you know, maybe make a package where they get rid of one of these picks. They have the Chicago bulls pick this year too. So they're going to have two possibly top 10 picks. Um, I like what they're doing. I just think they're still, they need that guy. They need, they need to make a, they need to make a splash. They need to sign a free agent. They need to make a trade. They need to do something to package with, you know, these young guys that are developing. Yeah. One, one more name to add to the shuffle there is Franz Wagner. He had a great game last night as well. He was in foul trouble, but he ended up with 21 points and he, he looks the part. And if, if Paolo is who you think he is, and then you, you get another top five pick this year and he can be your third guy, even your fourth guy behind ball ball, they got a lot of talent. They're adding a ton of length. They're building on the front line. They're they're building that more modern basketball, right? Everybody's six eight and up, and then they all can dribble. But it it was amazing watching those guys in person. Bowl is gigantic. He is Victor, right? It, when when we saw him a few years back in high school, he's finally becoming that player in the league. He's had a tough go of it. He has a couple coaches didn't think he had it, and and people were thinking he was going overseas. But watching him run around the court yesterday, just being that nimble at that size. 
and he's he's crossing people up. He's he's making long threes. He's euroing in the lane, and and it's it's pretty insane. I'm happy for him that he's able to finally become that player that a lot of people believed he could be. And he's only going to get better. He's still he's still really young. Yeah, they got some stuff there, and I think you guys are right. If they get that playmaker, if they get that floor general, somebody to keep it all in order, they're building something nice over there in Orlando. And also, selfishly, saying bowl, bowl as many times as possible is what gives me <laughs> life. So we need more of that. Um, look, we got to talk Suns. I, it's a weird situation with the Suns. They're sitting atop the standings in the West. They're top five offense, top five defense. Last night, Devin Booker with 44 in a win over the Kings. And yet, I feel like they're not talked about. I don't know if it's because they play late from almost everybody in the country, but Chandler, as far as them being the best team in the West long term, do you see that? Yeah, I mean, I think the Warriors are kind of put it together as well. But yeah, I mean, we said that the West is deep, but it's not really heavy at the top. Um, but when you look at a team like the Suns, who's a top five offense and top five defense, I mean, that that's a championship statistic there. Um, DeAndre Ayton, who's player of the week, he's playing great. Uh, and when you see a guy like Chris Paul and Cam Johnson go out, uh, I was a little concerned, but Devin Booker has taken his game to the next level. I mean, the guy was first team all NBA last year and he's even better now. He's killing, he's definitely making, you know, he doesn't get talked about like the Lucas or the jaw does it. He just goes about his business. He's so smooth. The way he scores is just so beautiful to watch. The guy can do everything. He gets to his spots. He rises over people on his little pull up. Um, but yeah, I mean, this team is, you know, they're proven they've had great success the last couple of years. The, the West is deep and the only other contender I see out there for them is the warriors as of now. Yeah, this, this look, I think the way last season ended soured a lot of people on this team. I think Chris Paul kind of leaves a lot of a lot of naysayers in his wake as well. But th this was this was the number one seed in the, in the league last year. Th there was a reason they ran away with the one seed in their conference. Uh, they're they're stacked. They're deep. They're even missing, you know, Cam Johnson right now, who was supposed to help them as well. And then the Jay Crowder situation. But this, this is a team that wants to compete for titles. They just played in the finals two years ago. It feels like an eternity ago. Um, <laughs> they they know what it takes to get back there. They know how close they were to winning that. They're, they're motivated. And Book, you know, I, I, I don't know. We do the top 10 rankings or whatever, but he's one of the great offensive players in the league for sure. He can lock in on defense when need be. They're a strong defensive team as a team. Uh, he he's He's a game changer, man. And I'm happy. You know, he had those first couple of years of his career was like, yo, good stats, bad team, whatever. And I'm happy that he's doing it and winning games now and, and finally getting recognized. A little dark horse MVP candidate this year. Some rumblings last year when they were the one seed. But uh, he's been great. And it's you, you, with Chris Paul out, it's been fun to watch him do his thing as the, as the lead dog out there. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what else Book has to do to kind of start getting these clicks and this love. Like mm -hmm. the dude carried them to a number one seed last year. He's doing his thing again this year. I will say Mikael Bridges has become one of my favorite players in the NBA. This guy's literally the best two-way player in the league in my eyes. He does everything. He guards the best player on the other team. He knocks down threes. He's getting to his bag a little bit in ISOs. He dunks everything. This kid, to me, is the key to them. We know, we know Book is going to go give him 30. Uh, we know these other guys, but Bridges, man, has been so impressive. Yeah, it's just it's weird. We just don't talk about them the way we talk about everybody else. Shams, you go get to work, and we will see you tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Appreciate as that. always. <laughs> Coming up next, <clears throat> should the Sixers change things up? And PJ Tucker doesn't score, but does it matter? We'll be back. Look at this, Anthony Simons, baby dame, not a bad person to be compared to. And the first part of our you buying that segment here today, we're going to concentrate on Simons. Uh, Chandler, you're up first. Look, he's got 20 plus points in eight of his last 10 games. Uh, are you buying that he can carry this Blazers offense when Dame's out? Yeah, this kid is a straight hooper, man. He's from my hometown. He 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 is an absolute bucket. He can score in multiple different ways. He can shoot the ball. He's great ISOs. I mean, he's averaging 23 points a game, and 
the comp he the the Blazers had so much confidence in him. They literally got rid of CJ McCollum because of this kid that they think he can kind of fill in and, and provide what CJ was doing. So uh, they're nowhere near the team without without Dame. But yeah, this kid is going to be the go to guy. Um, he's already the second option on their team with Dame. So I don't think much changes. But it'll be interesting to see him as the number one guy and can he continue to do this with teams solely focusing on him and throwing double teams at him and trapping him. But yeah, I think he's a bucket and I think he's going to continue to score a lot of points for this team. All right. So one down, one bought. Eddie, you've got Jalen Green, 28 and 30 in his last two, all of his numbers up from his rookie season. Are you buying that the Rockets can build around this guy? Uh, yeah, absolutely. He's actually kind of a similar player to Amp in, in that, you know, these are the modern guards, right? Chandler, when we were growing up, you weren't able to dribble into a shot. It was like, no way. You, you got to catch that or it's got to be closer to the rim. Um, but these guys with their footwork and this, their just ability to be that shifty. And he's so athletic that it's ridiculous. I know he didn't have the greatest showing in the dunk contest last year, but he's an absolute freak athlete. He's only going to get better. Average 18 points a game his rookie year, which is crazier than I think people realize. He's up to 21 this year. Um, as he as he improves as a shooter, he's up to 35% from three this year. Uh, he, he's only going to be even better. Uh, he, he he's he's got a little bit of playmaking flair as well. So he's just gonna he's so young. He can't even drink yet. He can't even drink till like March. <laughs> uh, absolutely, you build around him. You got you got to. He's great. You can't even drink yet. <laughs> it's like shocking. Uh, this is my this might be my favorite one, Chandler Tyrese Halliburton. First player with 40 plus assists and zero turnovers over a three game span. Uh, are you buying him as the best point guard in the league right now? Uh, no, not even close, but he, that is a crazy stat and, and he is playing very good. You know what he is? He's a throwback point guard. And the fact that he's a table setter and he's a floor general. And these days point guards like Luca and Ja and Dame, they're their score for uh, score first guards and he's a breath of fresh air though man he's a creator for others it seems like it's really really fun to play with you could pair him with one of these scoring point, point guards and and it would be a great fit but am i no as long as steph curry is playing he's the best point guard of the nba but then you got these other guys that i still are think a little better than tyrese but he's having a great year he's got the keys to this team and he's as a point guard you don't want to turn the ball over and he is not doing that mm -hmm. that is very efficient i love that all right eddie shake milton averaging 22 a game 55 percent from the floor are you buying that he should stay in the rotation once maxi and harden return yeah for sure and i know it gets a little jumbled there with maxi and harden as primary ball handlers but they have to find minutes for Shake. He, he's, he's been a bucket at every level of basketball he's ever played. He's been a bucket for the Sixers. He's just been in and out of their rotation. Um, the, the way he's picked up the slack for them while these guys are hurt has been amazing. He's He has to be out there. They have to find minutes for him. Just going back to what we're saying, where the, they have so much talent that they just need to find that style of play where they can make it work. He's a part of that puzzle as well. He should be backing up Maxi. They should find time for them to play together. He can shoot. He can score on every level. You have to have him on the floor. You just have to. So, yeah, let's get him 18 minutes a night. We can make that work. All right, we can make that work. We'll figure it out. How about DeMar DeRozan? 26 plus over his, uh, or seven of his last eight. Uh, Chandler, I love when we give you these lists because you're very matter of fact. Are you buying that he's a top 15 player in the NBA? No. <laughs> No, again, I, I think he's more in the 30 to 40 range, I think. And that's not even a knock on DeMar. I think the league is just so talented now, and there's a lot of guys that I would personally rank higher than him. But, yeah, he's a bucket. Well, you he's know always... what? Tell us right now. Give us all the players you rank above him. I mean, if, if you name a team besides pretty much the Spurs and the Magic and the Rockets, there's someone on that team that I would rank higher than DeMar DeRozan. <laughs> and that's, I listen, he's, he's the, one of the last guys to still have the mid range scoring. He's always been a bucket. He's going to score points guys averaging 26 points a game. Um, but no top 15, top 15. We're talking no, no, no chance. I really think that we should give Chandler homework and you give us all of the, we give you every team, you give us the player better. And then the 30, I want the top 30. I feel like this would be a good oh, project. I'll have it by tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> This is like when we're on holiday and we just need a show. Boom, Chandler. Uh, PJ yeah. Tucker, again, chef's kiss. Uh, one field goal in his last eight games, but he's uh, plus 48 when he's 
on the floor. Eddie, does it matter? Are you buying it? Does it matter if he scores? I hate plus minus as a stat. <laughs> so I don't like that's a line of that's like he's probably playing most of these minutes with Joel Embiid. Joel Embiid's probably plus 40 in that time as well. Uh, I understand the value of PJ Tucker. I understand he's a versatile defender. He's he's a culture guy. He's all that good stuff. I get it. But yeah, one bucket in eight games is pretty absurd. Like that, you almost have to try to do that. So uh, it, it does matter that he doesn't score, and and they're gonna guard him like that in the playoffs, and that's gonna swing games and swing series if if he can hit three threes one night, you know. So yeah, it, it matters. I'm sorry. I love Pease though. He's he's great. I, I, but he's got he's got to score more than once a month. Like let's try to do that. Once. <laughs> So many jokes. <laughs> Chandler. <laughs> I don't know. No, say nothing. You're working on your project. All right. Next up. Does De'Aaron Fox want out of Sacramento? But more importantly, does Boogie Cousins want in? We chat all of that when Run It Back returns. Run it up. The run it back. Yeah. Run it up. The run it back. Run it back. Run it up. And I think it's funny. Like, you bring up DeMarcus. He was here just for a year. DeMarcus called me a month ago. And he said, uh, he said, why am I not in the NBA? I said, you want, you want that answer? Mm. He's like, yeah. I said, because people are afraid of how you're going to act. And he's like, why? I said, well, whatever the reason is, mm -hmm. it's here now. Mm -hmm. and, and I like DeMarcus. Mm -hmm. Like, you guys may know him or not. Mm -hmm. Like, he's just, I can't blame him for him because of all he's been through. Mm. All right. So DeMarcus Cousins wants back in the league. Should he be? Should a team take a chance on him, Eddie? Um, it's tough. I mean, I, I, I Bob was kind of brutally honest here. Demarcus still has talent, but you have to weigh if that's going to feed into your locker room, what you're building with your team. Maybe you want to develop your young guys. It, 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 it's tough. I think is the talent still being the league. His personality kind of ran him out the league. I I was in Sacramento when he was with the Kings, and you know you hear stories and you kind of see what they what happens on that sideline and it's tough, but he's a talented guy, man. And he's had a rough go of it ever since that Achilles injury. And I, I, I hope for the best for him. I think there's a place for him in the league, but I think Bob is right. I mean, I'm kind of shocked he said this publicly, but I don't think Bob is right in that. Yeah. You know, some of this is kind of self-inflicted. Yeah. He's, he's, this just shows you that it's not all about talent and that can only get you so far. He's just, he's a distraction. He's moody. He's, he's not what you want in the locker room. It seems like everywhere he goes, there's always issues. He's always getting into it with the refs. Even when he went to Denver, I thought, all right, at least fake it and try and act like you've changed and you've matured. And he, he can't, he physically can't. So I don't, I don't see it. I don't think there's room for something like that, especially on already a championship contending team. Like why even bring in those possible issues when you can have a younger guy that there's, you're not going to wonder which version of him are you going to get that day? Uh, it's sad and it sucks because he's such a talent and he was such a, he was the best big in the NBA for a long time. It's just, you know, his personality and his moodiness kind of messed up his whole career. Yeah, it's a bummer. I, I, he used to do stuff with us at ESPN, and um, he was great to deal with. But then you read everything else and see everything else, and it's very confusing. He's obviously not the only guy that would love to be back in the league. I mean, let's be honest, it's a heck of a gig. Uh, Carmelo Anthony and Isaiah Thomas both also wouldn't mind another shot at the big show. Um, I, I, more likely return if you had to put money on it, and we know how great we all are at putting money on things here. Melo... Thomas or Boogie? Who's going to see league action first, Chandler? I think it's Melo. I think Melo should be in the league. I mean, I think he he played great last year. I mean, he kind of had revived his career in Portland. Um, he can still do it. There's one thing Melo can do. It's a bucket. And a lot of teams could use him right now. The Lakers could use him right now. Um, I don't see the Isaiah Thomas. I don't see the boogie thing, but Mello, he is what he is. And, and if he's at least staying in somewhat shape, he, he can still help a team and, and definitely score points off the bench. Eddie, you agree? Yeah, I'm, I'm actually kind of shocked Mello isn't in the league right now. I think he will be before the end of the season for sure. You know, the, the Isaiah Thomas thing is – I, I seen him on, I forget what he was on, but he said he was never a defensive liability, which is like, come on, IT. I, I love IT like everybody else, but come on now. 
Um, but yeah, I think Melo will find his way back into the league. And, you know, it, it, the way the league treats these vets now, it's kind of crazy. You know, they'll, they'll legit send you home. And, and Melo was out of the league and, and showed he was good enough to play in the league and really had to work his way back. We're talking about a Hall of Famer um, who, who still has a lot to offer. So, you know, it's just the way of the business, as they say. But yeah, I think Melo will be out there relatively soon. But why? But why with the mellow thing, especially because that project's already been done and it proved to be it worked. So why is it that it seems like he has to start over again from scratch just to have another shot in the league? Like, I'm not, I'm not the biggest Carmelo fan, but I'm with you guys. Like, I don't understand why he's not on a roster already, Chandler. Yeah, this is a head scratcher because, you know, he's did the whole thing where, like, he's not coming off the bench and he wasn't accepting that role. But but then he did and he and, did. He, and and he thrived in it. And. It's especially the Lakers, like they signed all these guys that can't score, that can't shoot. Meanwhile, this guy is just sitting on the shelf over there ready to play. So this one, I mean, listen, he's never been a great defender. He's he, uh, he's he's always been the go-to guy, but he showed us that he's mature enough to accept that new role off the bench. And I think he's got to sign with the team here soon because he's better than a lot of guys that I've seen play this season on NBA teams. <laughs> It's a simple statement. True. It's true. <laughs> we'll leave it at that. That's just perfectly said. Uh, we're taking a quick break. When we come back, it's your chance once again to bet against us and win some money uh, when Run It Back returns. Run it up. Run it back. Yeah, yeah. Run it up. Run it back. Run it up. Run it back. Run it up. Run it back. Run it up. So before we get to today's four leg parlay, this is uh this is last night. Eddie. 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 Did we learn anything from what we did last night here? And also, why why did you attack Rudy Gobert in such a way? <laughs> Look, I'm gonna I'm gonna throw somebody under the bus real quick. No names, yes. but our producer when I sent in <laughs> my my line, my my parlay legs here, okay. he said good stuff. Gobert unders are easy money. Uh, they were not <laughs> last night. They were bad <laughs> money. So thanks so much for that. Seven for seven and four, 19 points. Ruined it all. Rudy, I understand why I'm blocked on Twitter. I get it. Thanks. Uh, wait, so are you really blocked on Twitter by Rudy Gobert? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Nikola Jokic <laughs> lit him up, and I just had to let him know. So I'll never see another Rudy Gobert tweet. It's fine. It's cool. I'll let, I get I'll let you know if he says anything good. Uh, by the way, the producer's name is Danny Corrales. So I just want to make sure that that's out there. Uh, so everybody gets their share of love. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on, though, we do have we have one more chance. Um, they're letting us do it again. Someday they're going to figure this out. But four leg parlay, Eddie, you're first. Give us your two. All right, I got Jeremy Grant over 21 and a half points today. He's averaging 28 points a game with Damian Lillard out. It should be easy money for my guy. He's easy been killing money. it. I'm, I'm all I'm all for it. Uh, after that, I have Spencer Dinwiddie over two and a half threes. He averages seven threes attempts a night. So come on. Let's make it happen, Spence. This is going to be a <laughs> wide open game against the Warriors. It'd be a lot of shots Chandler. out there for you, buddy. Chandler, you were perfect last night. What do you have? Yeah, Eddie, you got to get your head out of your ass here. Come on. But uh, <laughs> but I like the Mavs. I like the Mavs. Mine are a little <laughs> weird here because I like the Mavs plus one and a half um, against the Warriors. But then my second one is I like Luka under 32 and a half. I mean, that, that's a lot of points. I don't care who you are. That is a, that is a lot of points. Um, you know, I, I just see it happen. I think Eddie, I think this might be the one I feel really, really good about this. Yeah, uh, I know, don't know our, if I agree. Really? <laughs> our picks are so crazy that we ran Beetle off. off I, the right? I, the, the worst part is I can still talk, but you can't see me. Maybe it's because I'm so disgusted. They couldn't hide my poker face, but I'm still going to say this. We need predictions for USA, Iran later today. We're Patriots. Eddie, what do you got? Go. They have to win to move on, right? I'm not a, I'm not an yep. expert here, but I'm going to go with the little slight hint of patriotism and say they get it. one okay. nothing. Oh, I like it. Chandler? <laughs> I got USA 2-0. <laughs> there you uh, go. Proper. Expert uh, breakdown. Proper, I know, right? Like, yeah. come to us for your World yeah. Cup predictions. It's 2-0, by the way. But yes, USA, USA, make it happen. We'll be back tomorrow. Maybe I'll even show up on camera. Good luck on the parlays, everybody. Run it up.